in this example, we're going to use R to analyze the causal effect of a hypothetical program that provides tutoring to people um, depending on an entrance exam. And then we'll see what the causal effect of tutoring is on their exit exam. And we'll be able to do this because of regression discontinuity. Um, and so we'll be able to calculate kind of the causal effect based on parametric lines and non-parametric lines. Um, we'll change the kernel, we'll change the bandwidth, we'll do a whole bunch of other things to kind of measure every possible way of, of determining the size of the causal effect or the gap between the lines at the cutoff point in our regression discontinuity. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start, we're going to create a new RStudio project, and we're going to put the data that we downloaded from the class website into that project, and then we'll load it, and then we'll start doing some stuff. Um, so to start a new project in RStudio, we're going to go to File, New Project, and it will pop up in a minute. We want to create a new directory and a new project. We're going to create this directory just on the desktop here. In, in your case, you'll create it wherever your class folder is or wherever you want it on your computer. And we'll call this RDD fun, because why not? Um, so I'm going to click on Create Project. It will close this current RStudio and open a new, new RStudio instance that is pointed at that new folder. Um, we can verify that it's pointed at the right place if we look at the console panel here. It says that our working directory is currently the desktop slash RDD fun. And so that's where everything is going to be based. Um, we can also see that up here. This is the name of the project that we're working in. If I click on this menu, it shows all of the past most recent projects that I've been working with. Yours will look different. Um, so next we want to get the data into the folder. It hasn't, we're not going to load it into R yet. We just want to get it into our folder um, for this project. So if I go to Finder, again, this has nothing to do with R. This is just navigating on my computer. Um, if you're in Windows, you'll have um, Windows Explorer that lets you look around at your files. Um, so this was on my desktop. And there's a folder here called RDD Fun. So I'm just going to right click here and make a new folder. And we'll call it Data. Um, in Windows, I think you can right click and also choose New Folder. Um, the file I downloaded, the CSV, is right here in my downloads folder. So I can just drag it into there. Um, what, do whatever you need to on Windows or Mac to just get the CSV file into the data folder. And you should be good to go. So if we come and look at our studio now, um, and we click on this little refresh button, it will show that we now have a data folder. And if I click in there, there's the tutoring program.csv, and we are good to go. So we're going to create a new R Markdown file to do our work in. Um, we can leave all the default settings there. That's fine, because we'll just change it later. We don't need any of this placeholder stuff after this metadata section. Like, we do want this. Um, but we can just select from line 7 all the way down, delete that. Um, and then we can change the stuff here and say RDD fun, and put my name here. And we should be ready. So I'll go ahead and save this. And we'll just call it something um, RDD stuff. OK, so now I have an R Markdown file here called RDD stuff. That's this file here. This is where I'm going to be doing all of the typing um, and running code and seeing all of the output. So we are ready to start. OK, so to start, we need to insert a chunk so that we can load the libraries that we need and load the data into our studio and then start doing some analysis with it. Um, so I'm going to insert a new chunk here. If I click on this, this little menu here, I can insert an R chunk. You can also do this with Command Option I or Control Alt I on Windows. Um, and then now we have an empty chunk here. Um, and so here, we want to load the libraries that we're going to be using. Um, we're going to be using five different libraries for this. Um, we're going to do library tidyverse. Um, this has ggplot and dplyr and kind of all the main the main packages that we care about. Um, we'll also want library broom because that lets us convert um, model objects into data frames and it makes it print nicer when you knit and you can extract um, variables a lot easier. Um, for actual um, non-parametric regression discontinuity, there are two packages that we're going to be working with for that. 
Um, there's one package called RD Robust for regression discontinuity, like robust regression discontinuity. And then another one called RD Density, um, which lets us um, make the McCrary density plots to see if there's any manipulation around the cutoff. So we'll use both of those. And then finally, um, just so that we can see some of our regression models all at the same time in one table, we can do library model summary, which will let us show um, linear models simultaneously in the same plot. Um, now we need to get our data into our studio. So we're going to do that with the read CSV function. Um, so we're going to make a new object called tutoring. And this is going to be equal to read underscore CSV. And it is in our data folder. So data slash, um, what did we call it? Click on data, tutoring program. Data slash tutoring program dot CSV. Okay, so if I click on the play button now, it will run this chunk. It'll load all of the libraries, and then it should load this tutoring um, CSV file into R. And now we have a tutoring object. So if I click on this, we have a data set with four columns in it, has an ID column, it has their entrance exam, it has their exit exam score, and whether or not they used tutoring. So that's all we need for this regression discontinuity stuff. Um, if you notice, there was a whole bunch of messages that popped up here. Some of them are helpful. Some of them are just kind of annoying. Um, so what I like to do, again, is turn those off. And so if you click on the gear icon for that chunk, you can tell it to not show warnings and not show messages. Um, it's also a good idea to name your chunks. So we'll just call this one load libraries data. Um, chunk names can't have spaces in them, so you can use dashes or underscores here. Um, and so now this chunk here is called load libraries data, and we are hiding the messages, hiding the warnings, and it should be good. So if I click on it again and run it, there's no warnings, no messages, and we still have our tutoring object, and we're good to go. Um, the nice thing about having the name is if I click on this um, table of contents button here, now I can see that chunk one is the load libraries data chunk. If I click on it, it moves me up to that. Um, so now we have data in our studio and we can start analyzing it.